Hi everybody, we're back here in my workshop. I'm, my name's Colwyn Way, um, and we're here for bringing the skill centre to your home. Now, unfortunately, um, due to a few technical issues, I'm not live at the moment, so um, you'll be watching this this afternoon. Um, but we're still gonna bring you some content, so that was the most important thing. Now, hopefully by Thursday, we'll be back up and running again, so don't worry. Um, today, we're gonna answer a couple of the questions that um, we've had come in um, in the past week. Um, and one of them, one of the most important one, was um, about finishing. So we're going to look at a few different finishes. Now, um, coincidentally, I've got a project on the go at the moment where um, I'm not sure about what finish to use. So we're going to have an experiment. I was very, very lucky um, to be offered um, an old pew that had come out of um, a church in a village called Burnham on Sea. Um, in the southwest of, of the UK. Now, um, that pew was four metres long. And now, it wasn't a particularly old pew. I would have said it dated from around about the 60s to 70s, 1960, 1970. Um, it was solid oak. Um, so half of that pew, or a little bit more, about three metres of that pew, is now sitting in our kitchen and we use it at the dining table um, every single day. But there was a little bit left over, so I made a shelf with one piece. And then the rest of it, I've converted to blanks, which we're gonna show you in a minute. Um, I've got 100 blanks for uh, bottle stoppers, 100 blanks for bottle openers, um, and 100 of these guys, little bookmarks, just all waiting here to be done. Okay, loads of little blanks here. So 100 of each we've made, or a little bit over 100 of each. Um, these are for some big orders um, the, for a particular shop, the mixture of places really. Um, but I want to experiment with finishes. I also want to experiment with design as well. I'm not overly sure about the shape I've got here. This is the first design. So what we're going to do today is make one of each of these two guys. So the, the opener and the stopper, show you how to do it. Um, show you how to do it and then um, use a different finish than what I've got on at the moment. We'll talk finishes in a moment. You'll see these are quite gloss, quite glossy because um, they've got a lacquer on. Okay, so we're going to experiment and look at uh, what we can do differently. I want to have a choice and we're doing, I'm going to do a little bit of market research then once I've got another two shapes done um, and another couple of finishes done, I'm gonna to go to the family and say, right, which is the best one? They're the ones I'm gonna run with. So that's what we're doing, okay? So Finn, do you wanna come on over? Just show everybody that I'm not messing around. We really are um, got the, the blanks there ready. This particular oak is really quite nice as the, the medullary arrays are really strong. If I, I'll bring it up to the camera, hoping the camera can, can see that. You can see those flecks, very um, characteristic of oak. Okay, so we've got some really nice, nice timber there. Um, and you can still see the old varnish, or the old color on one side. That's the original side there. But that's all ready. So we're gonna go through the process. And you know I keep talking about production turning. This is obviously a bit of production turning, um, but nice production turning, crafty side of production turning. So we're gonna look at where we go, where we start, how we do the project. Like I say, we have done a couple of these before for you, but this is a slightly different look at it. Um, and a chance to use some of those different finishes that you can see along the front here. And those finishes will vary all the way through from um, sanding sealers to oils to waxes um, to friction polishes, all those sorts of things. So we're going to look at that in a moment. Okay, so um, Finn, if you can pan back to the chuck area, we're going to start by just, we're just going to pick on one each of these blanks. We're going to prep it. And normally if I was going to be doing um, the run, I would obviously do all of the one size first and then turn them before I pick up the other one and, and prep that. Um, so for your information, I've written down the sizes of these blanks that I'm starting with. So for the bottle stopper, I've got a 78 mil by 40 by 40. This is all in metric millimeters. And then for the bottle opener, we've got a 143 long and a 25. Okay, obviously that gives us a little bit of room for play, a little bit of room for manoeuvre. Okay, so we're going to start, I've got a set of um, OD112s in here, so the O'Donnell Jaws, um, um, inch and a half uh, OD, so the middle size. Um, they can hold both of these for my drilling. So what we're going to do, um, I'll do them both in the same way. Look, I can use the whole of the movement of the chuck. That will slot in there nicely, really well supported. Okay, nicely upright. And that gives me loads and loads of freedom then to be able 
to be able to get that hole nice and central. There we are. So that's that's in there nice and central. So that can be tightened up now. Pop the bottle opener to one side a moment. And we're going to bring that along just at a very slight angle. I'm just going to knock the corners off of that with my bowl gouge first. Lay speed to zero, start the machine up. I won't bother with a light just yet. We'll keep the light off just for the moment. Um, lay speed's going to be around about 1800 to 2000. Small six mil bowl gouge or quarter inch bowl gouge. Take the corners away. So not worried about diameter just yet. All we're doing is cleaning up. Then I'm going to just clean that surface. Okay, so that's our first job. We'll stop and have a look at that. We'll get some light on the subject as well. All right, Finn, that hasn't bleached out too much, is it? Nope, no, that's right. Okay, let's have a, we'll pop this one in. And we're gonna drill. So we think about drill sizes um, for what I'm doing here. Um, we're gonna use quite a lumpy drill bit. I've got two drill sizes for these projects. Let me just get the sizes for you. Okay, so for, for the bottle stopper, we're using a 7mm drill bit. For the bottle opener, I'm using an 8.5mm drill bit. So that's 7 for the bottle opener and 8.5... Sorry, I'm confusing myself now. 7 for the bottle stopper and 8.5 for the bottle opener. Not too fast, about a thousand revs here. Got a little mark on my um, drill bit, so I'm going into 25 mil. There we are. So that's that one prepped. So don't need to do anything else to that just for the moment. That's my first of 100 bottle opener blanks all prepped and ready. Bottle stopper blanks, I keep making that mistake. Right, so now we're gonna to go to the bottle opener. Okay. So same set of jaws, look. We don't have to change the jaws. They're really, really versatile. There's a massive amount of movement in these chucks. There we are, nice and central because we've got that massive amount of grip and we're going to an 8.5 millimeter drill bit. All of these, or both, sorry, both of these projects, the actual, um, the actual um, uh, metal piece, the, the stopper and the opener, I actually epoxy them in. So I use a 30 minute epoxy resin, Z epoxy in my case, and just drill that in. Now, this is slightly longer. Here we're going to be going in about 40 mil. So up to my line. Make sure the swarf stays free. You don't get any blockages. Otherwise you get a lot of friction build up and a lot of screeching and a lot of noise. There we are, nice and simple there. So we'll take our drill trap away. I'll use the same bowl gouge and we'll just clean up that front surface again. And again, that's first of my 100, first of my 100 bottle openers. Just tidy up that front face up. And remember that drill bit was 8.5. It's gonna seem, when you first do that 8.5 drill bit, it's gonna seem very slack. It's to enable that to be that um, 
bottle opener mechanism be um, screwed in easily and with the epoxy it binds up nicely otherwise you'll find that you're really putting strain trying to get the thing in um, there's not a lot of grip to be honest right so let's start with the one that we've got there for the minute we'll start with that um bottle opener now the one the existing bottle opener that we've got is there slightly rounded i'm going to keep this next one straight so i'm going to make it angular as opposed to curved okay and we're going to then treat this one with a i'm going to use an oil um, on this one because you've got to think about a bottle stopper or even a, a, a bottle opener um, think about how they're used they're going to be handled all the time you've got the acids from your hand so you don't want anything that's going to um, blemish or come off so you treating it with a wax won't um, it won't last very long you treat it with a friction polish again it won't last very long so something that's got some resistance to it so um, a water resistant oil or a lacquer that creates a barrier that either of those two things that's what that's the direction I'm going in um, doesn't have to be if it's an oil it doesn't have to be food safe because you're not actually coming into direct contact with it um, but the oil would have to be toy safe I would I would say I don't want to put anything toxic on these um, uh, just because it's coming in contact with your hands regularly um, so let's connect that to the lathe so what centers do I need let's go with a, a single pointed tailstock center okay that'll be a good one for here and I'm gonna use a friction drive we've got a hole there so we might as well use a friction drive um, that'll be the best way I think and then I don't have too much in the way then so I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this one I'm gonna use a light pool drive and then whatever we do we're turning around the center hole that we've already made that's gonna slot onto there you see so let's get everything up nice and close between centers There we are, a bit of friction on there. Um, I'm gonna carry on with the long tool rest only because um, that's longer than my short tool rest. So I need to still get in, I still need to do the full length. I can't get right up close though, so that's fine. I'll, I'll live with that. Um, and don't forget dimension on this one. I've still got it there before I take it away. 143 long, 25 uh, square. So let's start roughing down with a roughing gouge. So lace speed to zero, turn the machine up, and I'm gonna be turning it around about 2,000 revs on this project. Uh, you're up to 12. Okay, so the next thing I need to consider is turn that one off for a minute next thing i need to consider is the the diameter here we don't want this being horrible and and uh, overlapping too much you know being too big but likewise i don't want this being too big and create a sharp edge i want it just to roll all in nicely so i'm just going to make a measurement and i'll tell you that measurement so we're gonna make that measurement there in my case under the light a little bit i'm at 18 millimeters okay so 18 mil um once you've done one though easy to set up use your use your external calipers and this is set up from this one so i'm using my external calipers to recreate that diameter over and over and over again so let's get that measurement in first before we go any further um, I'm going to use a small 6mm beading and parting tool. And the other thing, I'm just going to have a look. Am I happy? Am I happy with the length of that one? So you think about it and using it, it's actually quite a comfortable length to use. Um, you know, the first one, you're never quite sure whether you go too long or too, too short, but that's not too bad. I'm, I'm, so, I'm not quite so sure about the thickness here. I think it might be a little bit thick, but this is all part of um, the, the development side of your projects. It's worth, worth checking out. So like I said, I'm going to keep this one angular. So I'm going to go now to the skew chisel, 
We're just gonna clean that finish up. And the other thing, do I want, even though it's angular, do I want it tapered or do I want it straight? And at the moment, I think I'm gonna, gonna straighten up a little bit. I think that that's actually quite nice, I like that. I'm not gonna go any further. Um, I will put a couple of little lines in though. There we are, make them nice and strong. If you wanted to, of course, you could now blacken those lines, so create yourself a little wedge and blacken. That's, that's an easy thing to do. Um, I'm just gonna keep it as is for the minute. And here, all I'm doing is tidying up, just tidying up this outside edge. Eventually, we're gonna part that off. So I'm happy with that. So let's sand that, and we're gonna put our first finish on. So I'm gonna put the dust extractor on. We're gonna sand through the grain, starting from 100. So you, I'm gonna go silent for a minute. flecks that are coming through from that oak um, so our choice is now if we look at the one that I've already done you can see the shine so what this is this is a coat of sanding sealer to raise the grain which I then sanded off I then used um, a chestnut uh, acrylic spray lacquer which and in this case a gloss version and now that's created a really hard finish and if you like gloss finishes perfect I want to make or give myself the option of something which is matte or even satin. Um, so I'm going to go with oil. Oil also has that resistance to moisture and acids of your, of your hands. Now I know from experience, because I've got an oak coffee table in our lounge, which is treated with finishing oil. That oak coffee table has had coffee, curry, wine, um, all sorts spilt on it and it's resistant to it. We wipe it clean and it doesn't stain. So I think I'm going to look at um, doing a finishing oil. Um, there's two that I use all the time. I use a Liberon and I use the Chestnut. Both of those finishing oils work beautifully um, and they're a slight amber in colour. So let's go with this one at the mo uh, first. When I say it's an amber in colour, that's different to uh, food safe oils. I've used food safe oils an awful lot over the past few weeks. There's my um, food safe oil, the chestnut version, and that's clear. That's like water to look at. 
um, I want some depth and I want some some um, you know some some luster here and the, the finishing oil I found it gives me a slightly shinier finish um, and that amber with the oak is just going to look nice and rich so that's what I'm using I don't need the food safe qualities of the food safe oil um, but this one does say it, it is got the um, the little toy tractor on there that which suggests um, or, or says that it's um, toy safe so once dry it is safe to be put in the mouth that is what they say so um but like i said you know these sorts of things they're not used to be eaten with um so we don't need to follow the same rules that we would with a a spatula or salad bowl or that sort of thing. So I'm going to cover this with oil. Now what's happening here is we're raising the grain. Normally, and certainly for the whole production run, I'll be brushing this on. I'm not going to rag it on. I brush it on um, so it, it, it just the job's done a little bit quicker that way. But here for you guys, I'm just going to rub it on at the moment. Now don't get any oil in the hole that you're going to glue the mechanism in, but you want to get oil on any other surface. Okay. Um, it just creates a, a nice bond or nice seal rather. We've got a little bit of sanding to do at the top yet, don't worry about that. But all we'll do is with a bit of 600 grit now, just sand that oil in at low speed. Just to start with, get it, get it um, drying. And also what's happening is we're raising the grain. This is wet sanding. It's a true form of wet sanding like you would normally do with water. We're doing it with oil, we're raising the grain, we're taking it off. So this finish will always remain soft and silky without the, the grain raising. There we go. Now oil will take, it's going to be a good few hours before it's fully hardened. But it's going to start drying within the hour. I won't bother burnishing, we'll just rag the surface. Get some heat and speed in there now. There we are. So now I'm just going to finish off by parting that, that handle away. Lovely little projects these. For, you know, if you're just fancy doing something of an evening or just a quick project to get blow the cobwebs away, then something like this is a lovely little, little gift, really. If you're into craft shows, that sort of thing, you know, practical objects always going to go quicker. There we are, I'm just going to part that off now with the skew. There we are. That way, a little bit of abrasive. A little bit of 240 grit abrasive on the top. You can put, once you, if you're doing a lot of them, I wouldn't bother doing this by hand. What all I would do is just put the sanding disc in and use one of your power sanding discs with say a 240 or a 400 grit on it and just sand that nice and smooth. But just for this, this instance, I'm just gonna do a little bit of hand sanding. We'll get a bit of oil on there, 400. little bit of oil okay let's pop it on its pop on its um, end let's pan back a little bit then so these come these come in nice convenient little um, bubble wrap packages so if you're selling them keep hold of those because you can pack them in those just to keep the metal bits nice and safe. Where do I get them from? Well, you know, my nice little bag um, of bottle stopper and um, bottle opener blanks. And that's gonna fit in there. There we are, with that glue. That looks quite nice. I think I've made my mind up, you know. So when it comes to those two, for me, for me, I think the straight one is better than that one. I'm gonna go with that one. And I also prefer the finish of the oil as well. 
So a little bit of our uh, research and development R&D there. Um, I better ask the family first. So we'll do a little bit, like I would say, a little bit of consumer um, questionnaires uh, later on. Finn, what do you reckon? Which do you prefer? I do like the one you've just done. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, there you go. 50% of the family like this one better so far. Okay, so we'll have a we'll, we'll come back to that one again in a second. Let's go move on now, though, to the um, bottle stopper. So the bottle stopper is a craft show favourite. It's a um, one of those things that like light pools, like wooden fruit, those sorts of things that they're your bread and butter line. So if nothing else sells, if you can't sell a big bowl, you're always going to do a few bottles, uh, bottle stoppers. Um, they're a great thing to make. There's all sorts of shapes and sizes out there. That's my shape. And that's the shape that I brought from my apprenticeship. So it's, um, it's a, a guy called Jeffrey Manley who uh, I served under um, 30 odd years ago. Um, he won't mind me nicking his shape. He was quite free and open with that sort of stuff. So that's what's the shape we're going to go with it. I like the shape. I just want to change the finish. I'm not sure about the finish. So to do that, we're not going to use this setup. You know what we've already done. We've got our um, hole in the center here. This is nice and true, slightly dished or, or, or um, uh, dished. Yes. Um, in there. Um, so that's going to go now onto our arbor and there's a specific arbor for this. And I would definitely recommend if you're doing a lot of these, go with one of these arbors because it will save you so much time and make this far more accurate. Now, in terms of the blank size, they're cut to size, so I don't have to worry about the diameter um, of the, the biggest section, but the diameter where this is gonna meet the actual bottle stopper, I do have to worry about that, that has to be the same. Otherwise, what will happen, again, like the um, like the bottle opener, uh, this diameter, we don't want anything overhanging this too much. Um, we don't want this overhanging the, the bottle opener too much. So in this case, we're gonna have a little bead on the bottom. So when they go together, there are no sharp edges. Again, a little bit of glue will go in there. So you can see that joins quite nicely. So it all flows really, lots of little beads together. All right, so that's our aim. It's here. This is, this is the diameter that we're looking for. It sets, it's like a, a bushing on pen making really. Uh, the other thing I would recommend you get when you get one of those is a little packet of spare nylon caps because they're always going to get worn. You're going to sand up to them. You're going to turn up to them. Um, so they're replaceable little caps that just protect the metal bit. Uh, a nice addition. Okay, so we do need the tailstock for the main section of turning. But once we've done that main section, the tailstock can come where you can clean up that little end, end area. Now let's go smaller or shorter tool rest. We've got a 150 mil six inch tool rest here. There we are. Excuse me, I'm just gonna have a swig of me coffee. There we go. I'll put the coffee down where I'm gonna get shavings in it. Lay speed down to zero. Turn the machine on. I already checked to make sure nothing was touching the tool rest. You saw me do that. Now I'm going back up to 1800 revs. And we're gonna go to the small bowl gouge again first. If you go for a big roughing gouge, there's potential there that you could strip the thread that you've got held in the, in the um, drive here. So I'm gonna go with a small bowl gouge. Oh, tighten that tool rest up a little bit more. Just, just looking at the camera, we're just going to come up and see if we can get you guys right on top of the action a little bit more. Right there. Perfect, thanks, Finn. Right.
So you may have noticed there I changed from using the tip of the tool, that's for my roughing cuts, to a skew cut, which was using this bottom edge and presenting the gouge just like you would a skew chisel. And that gives you a lovely finish ready to start shaping. So the shape, like I said already, the shape I'm happy with. So um, we've got this little bead first. So it's just a little bit bigger than the actual bushing or center. So let's get rid of some weight. Then using the skew, let's go with a nice small 3-8 skew here. Let's create a V-cut. You're half an hour in. Thanks, buddy. And then roll that bead over. Both sides. Bevel rubbing, using the heel. Go nice and deep. We're gonna do another roll here. We may need to clean this bit up in a minute. Get some depth. Okay, so now, because I cut these to size, I've already worked on the design. I'm gonna round this edge over next. So a little bit closer. Tell you what, I'm gonna go with a, a spindle gouge just to show you the difference in its use. So with a bowl gouge I just used, it's all about the handle movement. With a spindle gouge, it's about a roll. So I'm gonna start with bevel rubbing and then roll over. One more of those. I had a question this week, um, and I'm really sorry, I've forgotten your name already, I'm rubbish. Um, but it was um, to do with rolling beads and shapes, and the, to get in that shape, it influencing the timber rather than being influenced by the timber. So, you know, um, making the shape you want rather than letting them happen by accident. Um, that is all part of the learning process when it when it comes to starting out on your turning journey. Um, the better you get, the more influence you will have on the timber. Um, but in terms of how you do a roll or, or a ball, there's many tools. Spindle gouge is one. Bowl gouge is another, feeding and parting tools, skew chisel, all those things. And the best way is to practice. The only way you're gonna master it is more time on the lathe. So just getting that ball shape first. And then we can work on a curve. So just notice how with the spindle gouge we're starting facing nine o'clock or three o'clock and then rolling upward to the bottom of the curve. And because the bevel rubs you get that really nice burnished finish. There we are. This needs to be another little um, curve. So let's go back to our skew. B cut first. And then just roll over. A little bit of definition at the bottom. In fact, I want to go deeper than that. That's better. There we are. Happy with that. Curve's nice. Don't want to go any deeper, just in case the hole's a bit close. Um, so now we can start thinking about taking off the waist. So tools can be just popped to one side. 
and we can start sanding. So a little bit of noise again, but we're gonna go through the same process, guys. The same, same um, grades of paper. So 100 to 150, then 240 and a 400. Extractor's going on now. to do the same experiment, same consumer questioning, which do people prefer? I have already got an inkling. I know um, I really like the oil, the, the depth it gives, the richness in color it gives. The, the key for me is when someone uses it time and time again, how's it gonna wear? Um, and these are the two products that I've come up with, finishing oil um, and uh, lacquer. The lacquer creates the barrier um, and the oil has a, a, a resistance to it. Um, we're, if we talk about sanding sealers, sanding sealers are used if you're going to use a lacquer. They're also going to be used if you use a wax, but they don't get used if you use an oil because the oil is designed to soak into the timber. We're now going to wet sand that, tim that uh, risen grain away. So, you know, you need to allow that, uh, that, that penetration. Um, wax wouldn't be resistant enough to moisture and it would lift and tarnish quite quickly. Um, so there, there are my reasonings. The same with um, friction polish. You think about friction polish, it's based on shellac, um, so French polish. Got a lot of car carnauba wax in it. But again, you're going to wear that fairly quickly. Um, in terms of size of project, what, what would you use 
um, a particular finish on on size. Now, friction polish, I know, if you go too big with friction polish, it doesn't take kindly to it. You do get some dragging um, because of the extra shellac in there. Um, oil's pretty good. Sanding, sealer and wax is very good as well. And of course, lacquer. So if you've got, let's say for instance, you've got a bowl with a lot of texture in it and uh, like a piece of burr, then I'd go with a lacquer on that and spray it on because then you don't get those drag lines coming from the texture, um, those sorts of things. Um, in terms of finishes, as I go through the live streams, the live demos, please keep asking questions because we'll keep going over it and keep going over it. If you've got a particular project that you wanna, you know, that you wanna um, have a particular finish on or a particular um, uh, gloss or satin or anything like that, just say and we can have a chat about it. Everyone benefits from, from the questions that you guys all, all ask. There, so that's, that's a lovely thing. The other thing with oil, because you're, um, creating a slurry between the the dust and the oil that fills the grain it's like a, it literally is like a grain filler and so you get really nice sort of softness to it a silkiness almost um that wants to be handled so let's fit that one it should come off without that's lovely and then again if you go back a little bit thin let me same with these bottle bottle stoppers you they come in a nice little, nice little bubble wrapped package that can that you can keep. One side of this thread, there's a machine thread that fits into the actual metal piece. The other side is a cutting thread. Could you just um, move the light a little bit? Yeah. That's one. The other side is a cutting thread. So that goes in there nicely. And then we're going to force that one in. Screw the whole thing together. Actually, two seconds. I need to clear out the, the center of that one. Two seconds. dodgy bit of thread on there. There we are. So that, yeah, for me, comparing those two together, I'm I'm happier with them. The the matte, the sort of satiny finish by far, as opposed to the glossy, the glossy finish. That's what I'm going with. I'll keep that on myself. So we're going to go with sanding. Um, sorry, finishing oil on both of those projects. That one again. We're going to go with finishing oil on both of those projects. Um, that's the same oak, and that one looks a, a, a little bit redder. How, what, how weird. But there. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. That's um, a couple of nice little projects. Um, keep asking the questions. This is the only way we get our projects to do. Is, is it gives me a running list of, of questions to, answers, to answer. So I'm now going to crack on with the rest of my 100 bottle stoppers and bottle openers. Um, but until Thursday, hopefully back live again on Thursday. Um, keep turning. Have fun. See you again. Bye-bye.